here, the wet gas is literally dried by extracting liquid products such as natural gasoline, propane, butane, and isobutane. From the absorption plant, the dry gas goes to public utility companies, who in turn supply it to homes and industries for heat, power, and manufacturing processes. So much for the gas. Now let's go back to the gas separator and see what happens to the oil. After the wet gas has been removed, the oil usually flows to a dehydration plant or settling tank, which serves to remove water from the oil. The treatment and disposal of this unwelcome water is quite a story in itself. But let's follow the clean oil now to the field tanks. When these tanks are full, the quantity of oil in the tank is measured or gauged. At the same time, samples of the oil are taken from the tanks and sent to a laboratory, where tests are made to determine the quality and value of the oil. From the field tanks, the gauged and tested oil moves to a pumping station, where it is boosted along on the last stage of its journey to the refineries. And that's where our job of production ends and the complex job of refining the crude oil into marketable products begins. Many men, many jobs, and all because someone had an idea. An idea that expanded into a major industry, transforming vast areas of worthless land into gainful properties. Another such building, and another, and another, and yet another, until 13 Empire State buildings had been sunk to approach the depths which have been reached by rotary drilling. Suppose we watch the big job of sinking a deep well by the rotary method. The work begins with the erection of the derrick and the installation of the rig. This equipment may have cost up to a quarter of a million dollars, not to mention the 50,000 that may have been spent just getting into the well location. Before this exploratory well is completed, it may represent an investment of a half million dollars. And the chances of actually finding oil are about 10 to 1 against us. With the derrick and rig installed, drilling operations get underway. making hole. A heavy steel rotary table turns the drill string below ground. A square hollow pipe called the Kelly works off the rotary table and fitting through a square hole is free to move up or down. Fitted to the Kelly is a length of drill pipe. More and more of these 30-foot sections are added as the well goes deeper. At the end of the drill pipe is a drill collar, and below this, the bit. There are more than 50 different types of bits. Here, a simple one is used to cut through the soft surface formations. Mud. Scientifically treated mud plays a highly important role in drilling operations. Circulated by a battery of powerful pumps, the mud is forced up into the swivel, surging down through the hollow pipe of the drill string. It jets out around the bit to perform vital cooling and lubricating actions. Returning up outside the drill pipe. The mud seals the walls of the well. This helps maintain pressure and prevents the walls from caving in. In addition, the mud carries up the drill cuttings from the bottom.
time, intangible, elusive time, measured in years by the broad movement of planets, measured in seconds by the inventions of man. Seconds, tiny fragments of time marching single file down through the ages, writing the pages of history as they pass in review. 60 seconds every minute, 3,600 seconds every hour, 86,400 seconds every day. And with the fleeting life of each and every second, more than 4,000 gallons of oil are brought up from the earth. from the east, oil from the west, the north from the south, oil from 26 states of the USA and from 47 countries of the world. Oil coming from the earth in huge quantities to fill our increasing demands. In the United States alone, enough oil is produced daily, in fact, to float a giant ocean vessel. And that's a job calling for a lot of manpower. For example, a world-famous stadium has a seating capacity of 200,000 persons. Yet, it would require more than six times this capacity to seat the vast army of workers steadily employed in the oil industry. Many men, many jobs, and all because less than 100 years ago, someone had an idea. An idea that perhaps a man could find oil, oil in huge quantities, by boring a hole into the earth. The idea of drilling specifically for oil was new, but the principle employed was an old one. Almost 3,000 years ago, the ancient Chinese had developed a laborious method of drilling for salt. The well drillers would jump on a springboard, something like a diving board. This would give slot to the rope supporting the drill tool, causing the tool to drop and pound into the earth. Out of this principle evolved the early method of drilling for oil, cable tool drilling, in which a walking beam took over the job of lifting and dropping the drill tool to pound a hole. Now there are two common ways of forming a hole. One way is to pound or punch out a hole, as in cable tool drilling. The other way is to bore or scrape out a hole. Many men, many jobs, and all because someone had an idea. An idea that expanded into a major industry. Transforming vast areas of worthless land into gainful properties benefiting thousands of private landowners through the monthly payment of royalties, giving birth and sustenance to hundreds of clean, orderly communities around oil producing and refining centers, and developing a multitude of products, products which contribute so much to man's comfort in terms of heat, power, freedom of movement, and physical well-being. Only time and continuing research on the part of the petroleum industry will reveal what added comforts may be developed for the generations of today and the generations of the days to come.